Another interesting thing we liked about the Point Plus uh, uh, was basically adding it into a scene. So again, we have a scene like this. Uh, we were able to basically load up the position pass again, run it through our point cloud system. Uh, and basically this, this film was shot in South Africa, so there's a lot of dirt, dirt and dust kicking up. Uh, and we wanted the compositors to kind of uh, be able to, to add these cards in, in world space and kind of make their jobs a lot easier. So using this position pass, uh, we quite simply could add stuff in Nuke. Uh, so here's just a standard element we shot on the red camera. And this is just an example. We just put it onto a, a standard card like so. And really quickly, we can kind of basically have uh, the compositors go ahead and add these elements in world space and you know really hone in on where the um, the the, the uh, materials and the dirt and stuff need to be so they can look at the foot of the alien and basically position it right where it needs to be so you know we wouldn't have to run into you know issues of sliding or placing the element too close to the camera too far uh, and it worked out quite great and I can show you an example of, of that here so this was like a really a really quick example of uh, that procedure and then comped in with, into the alien shot, you know, you get something like this. So this took, you know, a couple of minutes to do. is quite simple and, and easy to do in Nuke's 3D workspace. Uh, and then going on from there, uh, uh, we had another shot that called for some uh, a particle system. And basically, uh, Goldtooth was responsible for the uh, creation of the, of the hologram. We did this little guy, little CJ guy here. Uh, and basically we wanted to add a little dust particles and bits kind of being captured in the light and floating around. Uh, and the traditional way, of course, is to open up a 3D application, load up a, a particle generator and do it. Um, but I thought it'd be kind of cool to just keep it all in Nuke. So again, our R&D team uh, wrote a little program called the Sprite Volume. And basically, we look at it here. So it's sort of the beginnings of a particle system uh, happening in a nuke. Uh, and it's been a great tool for stuff like rain and snow and sort of the atmospheric effects. Uh, and it worked quite well as kind of these dust mites floating in the air. And it was quite interactive and it was you know, easy to program uh, in nuke. Uh, you know, it can play with the size of it, you know, uh, play with the speed and the orientation. And it was kind of really cool to have this flexibility and control in Nuke uh, to do this kind of stuff. And uh, we basically imported an FBX file from our 3D application into Nuke. We brought in our cameras, uh, again, from our tracking program. And we can position our, our particle system. And you know, in, in, in quick time, we can basically create a particle system that was quite interactive and fast. And we can, we can do all sorts of things with it, which is, which is quite handy to do. Uh, another tool that uh, we kind of thought was interesting was um, using the point cloud to kind of assist compositors in checking their shots. So in this particular shot here, uh, basically, uh, you know, the common thing you do in compositing is you match your blacks, match your whites, and you know, you grade the CG to kind of make it melt in the scene. And one thing we were finding was a lot of the shots were really saturated, uh, shot in the EX1 or the red. And it was really hard to kind of fine tune that saturation level and just make sure it fits in real nice. Um, so the standard way that you, you could have done it is you know, convert this into a, a HLS or HVS color space and look at the saturation and kind of go through there. But uh, you know, I found it, you know, most compositors weren't really doing that. They couldn't really tell from a black and white image what their saturation levels were like. So I thought it'd be kind of cool if we were able to uh, use the point cloud tool, rejig the code a little bit, and have it give us a little display, uh, a visual 3D histogram. So here we have a, an example of that, and if I kind of show it like this, you can see the alien here. Here's the guy with the gun and the shack. And basically it just gives a kind of a, a cool 3D representation of the, the saturation levels of this particular scene. Uh, I mean, we chose saturation, you can easily program it to do the luminance values or 
you know, um, the hues or whatever have you. So it was really cool to use Nukes 3D as, as a toolkit uh, to help the artists kind of gauge their scene and, and uh, help them composite their shots better and, and hone it in a lot more. So uh, that was kind of fun. Uh, and finally, I can kind of show you the last thing that uh, puts all these pieces together. It's another shot here, which we did uh, uh, using the point cloud pass uh, as an example. And here again, it's just a larger version of it. So up here are all the elements that, that were shot running through their grades and transforms. Uh, and then finally kind of mapped onto a card here for the shot. Uh, and then we have our 3D <laughs> representation. So there's our beauty pass, there's our position pass, run it through our point cloud uh, uh, program here. So we had a 3D representation of of the shot, uh, and then it was really easy to basically place the, uh, the cards in 3D space. So here's the original plate, uh, and basically the, the action call for the alien to kind of run down this dirt road and kind of make his way up this little hill, uh, and there's a mercenary force that's firing behind him, so they need all this bullet ricochet and dust kind of springing up. So basically, using the same technique uh, that we had before, there's some dirt passes and using the, uh, the uh, point cloud pass, we were able to kind of place these elements in world space, you know, relative to where the alien was. Uh, and you have sort of a final product comp that looks like this, which really helped, uh, helped get the shot done. And there you go. How many people were actually involved in the project? Uh, we had, I think at our most, we were about 90 people, uh, uh, all artists and administration at Image Engine working on the show. And like, can you talk a little bit about kind of the pressures of why you want to do all this stuff in 2D versus 3D? I yeah. mean, is, <laughs> is time, budget, both? Uh, it's, I think so. I mean, I'm... I'm and creative, actually. Yeah, probably. and creative. Well, I, I'm, in the, I'm in the camp that, you know, I, I like... <laughs> I think lighting and compositing are very two similar things, you know, and I kind of want to see that role melt into one. Uh, and, you know, the power of Nuke and the speed of Nuke kind of really helped push that along. Uh, and especially with its great 3D tools and tool set, you know, it really helps kind of make that happen. Uh, and I think just integrating these roles into, uh, into a package and using Nuke's tool set and, you know, a lighting package's tool set, you can kind of uh, come up with better looks and be creative and, you know, push things out the door quicker, show the client more revisions and kind of do that sort of thing.